Celtic Lighters. Celtic Lighters. Celtic Lighters. Celtic Lighters. Celtic Hello and welcome to Celtic Lighters. Yeah. This is Gareth Lyons. Yeah. Um, and who am I? And that's over there is James Moran. That over there is Jeremy Clarks. Yeah. You're very quiet. Oh, am I? Just to let you know. How about now? That's better. Or should I say that's I think worse? It's cause <laughs> is it because I was leaning away, probably? Because you're coming through yeah. loud. Um, too loud. I was. Oh, yeah. You know, we talk about Tony Groves and the other fella. Martin. Martin McMahon. Yeah. Yeah. And we're getting, we'll probably get into it, but the one of the <laughs> tweets he made was like sharing an old performance evaluation that he had. Okay. And uh, the two things he shared, <laughs> and it just, just reminds me of how you, des- I don't know how you describe them, but some of the stories you tell me, it's like, he was like, the evaluation I got said that I was a bully and that I one of the lines was, don't bother telling him his opinion, don't bother telling him him your opinion because he doesn't care he just wants to say his own mm-hmm. and it reminded me of like you know the way you told me that sometimes it'll just be like screaming at the other guy to like <laughs> it'll be like they'll be it made essentially the same point but for some reason <laughs> he's just screaming at the other guy I mean that's just something I've noticed recently I thought it was funny and I don't want to like I don't really, I feel really bad because I really Personally, I know you could, might differ, but I really love the Tortoise Shack and all the podcasts they do and the outlet that they have. But like, it doesn't stop me. Even the stuff that I like, I still make fun of it. So I want, in case he ever listens, which I highly, I for some reason I doubt it because I just feel like he records more than he listens to yeah, podcasts to this that's stage. It, like each- but um, but he, uh, it was very funny because it was like, um, it was like a fifteen-minute podcast posted during the week about Northern Ireland. And um, it was on the Patreon and it was like, things got a little heated. And I was like, oh, right. And then um, and then I saw a tweet by actually by Linda Hayden, R.A.P. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, well, not R.A.P., but, you know, sorry. Very callous there. But um, but um, she was like, oh, it was like listening to my uncles argue or something. What? And what? I was like, oh, that's not a thing as well. I mean, I don't... I go to my uncle's some, house and they just argue in front of everybody. <laughs> it's really awkward. Yeah, but do you... Sometimes I hear that stuff and I think... You know where people go, God, yeah, do you remember where, you know, your family would get together and then, like, all three of them would, would do... And I was like... I always thought, thought, like... Well, maybe I just don't have a normal family because I have, like... Like, basically all of my relatives don't like being around each other and they will only come into the same room if there's a funeral. Yeah, you know? yeah. Not even a wedding. Because if it was a wedding, people would get excluded, do you know? Yeah. But if it was a funeral, everybody has to be there and, like, there's incredible passive-aggressive stuff being thrown Ooh. around. Or the other side of the family is that they all just live on a different continent, each of them, do you know? Yeah. Um. So it's like, I don't understand when, when people are talking about, oh, you know, your family and you're gathered around. And so I was like, okay, I guess that's just not for me to know. But now you're saying, oh, actually, that person is just... That's make made up. That can't be true. Yeah, like having your like listening to your uncles argue isn't an experience. You know what, I mean? what about her uncle and her dad? Because that might have been it. Uh, which even that I don't know. It's just not like no. I'm not saying. I just don't believe it. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, it was meant to be like kind of old Dublin type thing where it's like, oh, these two, you know, old fellas, queer quotations, yeah. getting into it. But people you know? love that. Like I saw someone they, they do. were like. Can I get a response for all the stuff you love that Dublin people say, like Dublinisms? And it was just stuff that people say. It would just be like, I love when I hear someone talk about doing the messages. And yeah, like, I know. That's just. I was like, do you like? Why do you think that Dublin has a monopoly on that exactly? <laughs> you know, it's like the entire country says this type of shit. You know, but like, yeah, yeah. But then the other thing I find very funny, and I don't know if we talked about it on this podcast or like a previous thing that we did, but do you remember that rap or whatever it was that Mango released for Una Malali's podcast, United Ireland or whatever? Mm, I do. And it was like, I love going down the shops. I love this type of... And he would just be talking about all this stuff and it was like anything that wasn't like 
you know something that everybody on the island does it was stuff that it was like i think you just have to like that because it's although to not like it would be a problem as in like i love dr quirkies it was like no you don't like you just have to like it because it's this gaudy awful disgusting thing on o'connell street like you know like it's it's meant to be like it's and it's a chain it's a chain gambling place it's like why do you like that and then they go oh, i love gay spar and it's like you know yeah you, I, you, it's, you're not gay like you don't get to love gay <laughs> spa you're not gay I i'm just saying I, got, I just find it i gotta do a thing where, well not a thing with manga ones where i remember looking at the crime forums a few years ago and he would like upload videos that weren't really very good of him like yeah. rapping and then last year I was being like, I was tweeting at him being like, hey, can you show me that old video you have? And he was like, actually, no, I don't think that video exists. Like, I described it to him, like the location. <laughs> and I was like, no, it was in this garage. And like, th- it was like this. And then he was like, yeah. no, I never made a video like that. Then I found it. And he had uh-huh. like listed it as private. He had hidden it on his profile. That is very funny. And then I tweeted at him and I was like, here it is, just in case you forgot about it. And then I... Uh, I think he took it down. So that's very funny. It was a good song. It was just not in line with that. Uh, I don't know, Una Malali. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, but that's that's it. And like, because I saw it recently during the week, because it did come up where it was like, um, about the pool bag towers that Leo put out a tweet, basically saying, "Oh, we need to, yeah, need to save them or protect no, we them don't. or tear them to... down." Do you know what I mean? Well, that's what that's what somebody was saying. They were tweeting that they were like, "They're fucking chimney stacks that are left over from a dead power plant or whatever." It's like just fucking get rid of them. It's like who gives a shit? And it's like a lot of people are very attached to them. I'd kind of be in a certain mind, but then other times you just go to like I don't know, like anywhere in England, and you see a bunch of these, and you're like. What are the pool bag towers exactly? Well, if they were still, for starters, like they're also called the pigeon house. I don't know why everyone started calling them the pool bag tower. But uh, okay. the other thing is that uh, it's like if the towers were still in use, yeah, I could see the point in keeping them. But like, if you go down in that area, there's just loads of old like electricity things. Mm. Like it's real creepy. But like, yeah, it's not then. Who cares? But you know where like somebody turns, or like kind of for want of a better word, like the rot and, and decay of something. And they're like, actually, this is great. And this is what makes this city so great is that on like, uh, you know, the same street where the Easter Rising happened, we have this incredibly tacky casino that like, you know, casinos in general, I'm kind of fucking like, what? I, I hate them in general. I think that they're, you know, bad. And then, um, I mean, and I'm then not, you have... Yeah, I don't see the opposition to the Dr. Quirky thing. Like, people do like that for whatever reason. I've never gone inside, but like there's one in Fibsborough that's like looks the exact same. I'm just like, why is why is it like that? People are attached to this. Like I, I just... people love Supermax. It's like there's a million of them, and they all <laughs> love them for some reason. Yeah, it's really fucked up that Goalie people continue to like Supermax, even though Pat McDonough is like the worst person in the world. And yeah, that's not <laughs> yeah. a reason not to like Supermax. Supermax is good. All right, so you know you're defending. Like I'm not defending it. I'm a Galway guy, and I don't give a shit about Superman. Yeah, culturally, you're from Dublin, though. You said that before, and it still rings true. Yeah. Unfortunately, so <laughs> you can have the pull back. Ta- you can have gay bar, <laughs> and I'll have Superman. Gay bar. I don't know why it bothers me so much. It's because I always want to be funny of... to you know the way there's the centre across the road. Talk about mm. straight centre. <laughs> I was hanging out at Straight yeah. Centre, you know. Yeah, well, but like, it's a brand. Spire is like what a, a European spanning brand. They've got Euro Spires all over the place, and then Spires here for whatever reason. And then they have Euro Spires here as well. They have Euro Spires here as well, but ultimately, like, it's it's just a, it's just like it'd be like if we called it like Gay McDonald's. It's like. Don't don't do that to McDonald's. Don't give them that. Like yeah. this is still a disgusting brand. It's like I don't know why you need to. You know, I yeah. I, I guess that's it. It's like to give some sort of like cultural relevance to something that is like ultimately a, a kind of tumor. You know, like at this on the city is what I think. Yeah, you know? yeah. I remember reading about this. I don't know what you call it. Like a part of it was like London. It was like England's most un un facilitated suburb and something. It was like this massive suburb, mm. 
and it only had like a Landis in it or something or whatever yeah. you know a Landis type shop and they were like it's our it's our cultural hub and if it leaves yeah. we'll have nothing and it was like they signed all these it was going to close down they signed mm-hmm. all these petitions and they were like we need this because <laughs> yeah. if we don't have this it would be anarchy I know like not kidding, there is a place in Dunmore, like where my mum grew up, it's like the super value. It's like, if you took that out, the community would collapse, you know? And it's like, yeah, I was in a town once with no shops, and it's really creepy. Like, <laughs> there's no shops, yeah, yeah. no pubs, only houses. Yeah. Very strange. I don't know I why. Remember... It's like, during when, when you were young, and like everyone had a TV, and then you go to a house, mm-hmm. and there would be no TV. And it was like... Yeah, yeah, and you're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's you just know? like, why... It's like that thing in Friends where Joey goes, like, I was just going to say, What's it, what do you point your furniture at? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is so true about that. Yeah. That is so true. Um, that is, you know what? It's funny. And it's also true. Yeah, Joey you know? is so It's funny because it's true. Um, yeah, the TV show Joey was really true. And uh, I really liked it. <laughs> true to life. Um, true to my life. Yeah, I really like that show and should have had. Uh, I was part of the campaign Six Seasons in a Movie yeah. of Joey. Yeah. <laughs> Six seasons in a miniseries. Yeah. And a movie. Want to know what happened to... Um, the nerdy... The Sopranos lady who was... Uh, in I was going to say the sister. son who got breastfed or whatever his name was. Yeah, I remembered him from Road Trip. Okay. So I remember them both from Joey. <laughs> uh. Do you know what's funny about Joey as well is that there was like a big story in... Well, there was two, two stories in Friends. You're going to think I'm completely ridiculous for this. <laughs> But um, there was like an, ac- an actor, I think his name is... God, I can't remember his name. Sorry, I think it's... Matt. I can't remember, but you remember the crazy roommate that um, Chandler had to replace Joey and he had the, like, fish biscuits in a tank? Oh, yeah. And he was like, yeah. what did he else do? Did he scream in his room or something? Yeah, exactly. And they he came back in Joey as, like, the, the boyfriend of, um, you know, Adriana. I can't remember yeah. her character's name in the show. And um, was he the same guy? No, a completely oh, different right. guy, and that really bugged me. But then, and then there was another one which wasn't as bad. But Joey's agent was also yes. in the last season of Friends. She was the one who came back, who was spent like six weeks in England, and came back with an English accent. Yeah, yeah, I feel like a right arse. Yeah, <laughs> and she's like, I don't use perfume; it's my natural odor, and it's like yeah. smell. And then Phoebe's like, smells mu- musty. <laughs> Uh, I just remember that British lady's a bitch, but she sure can dance, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you saw her dancing and it looked so bad. And I just love the idea that he was like, wow, that was really, I don't know. It's yeah. funny to me that Chandler enjoyed that dancing. Um, I was, I, got, I, got, I wanted to fin- finish the thing about them talking about Northern Ireland. Can I just tell you about my bad roommate? Yeah, please. It was when, it was when I was in school and he used to scream in his room, like loudly <laughs> at any time of day. And then we found out he was playing like World of Warcraft. And then <laughs> So he's just there like into battle. But like you know? screaming and like banging stuff. And then uh, one time I saw him cooking dinner. And it also called for like a diced tomato, like a cut up tomato. And then mm. what he did is he got a tin tin of tomatoes, poured them yeah. out onto the cutting board, and then cut them with a knife. It's funny, like Oh like I've been thinking about this a lot, just like the different things that people don't like, because I live my life in fear that somebody is going to tell a story like you've told about this guy, do you know what yeah. I mean? About something that I'm doing. It's like, can you believe this mm. guy did this? And I'm just like... But I, w- I once saw uh, you, where you, and I don't know if this is normal, <laughs> but I, <laughs> um, you were making chili and then you got an onion and you cored it. Yeah, no, that was a habit I picked up because I worked in like a subway or I worked in a Quiznos okay. and that was something they required you to do is to remove the core of the onion I was so and shocked. so yeah I know like it is very wasteful and I'm kind of like I, I'm really I really try to be like just cut the fucking core <laughs> but like in my head I just can't do it like I don't know what it is it's like maybe one day I'll get over it but like yeah no that is a problem that's that's the, something that I, I should be doing yeah Anyway, um, what was this about Northern Ireland? 
I, it was just the podcast that they were having and they're having this discussion about Northern Ireland and the crux of the argument was um, Leo uh, talking about um, you know where he got the thing wrong about there being Protestants in Sinn Féin that was so and, jabby because like <laughs> there isn't like they managed to pull out one Protestant I know like, I know I like, was like what yeah. a jammy Paul just to be able to be like, no we have one you know <laughs> Well, they had, they had like, it turned out there was one or two more, but oh, like, right, right. ultimately it was like, like, like any other low be it for me to give him, like, because also I'm not going to give him credit because no, obviously no. it's obvious what he's doing. It's the divisive rhetoric and it's this kind of like constant othering of the shit he does anyways. But ultimately it was like, yeah, where, where it goes like, oh, they're mostly Catholic. And it's like, incorrect. I think you'll find, like, Snope says there is one, yeah, you know, exactly <laughs> one Protestant. And, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, he's wrong, but it doesn't make you right, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but anyhow, yeah, they were talking about that. And they were talking about how disgusting it was, kind of like how we, we said there. And, and then basically, um, Tony Groves was of the opinion that, you know, he was kind of saying like people in the Republic need to shut up and allow the North to lead this conversation. Mm. And then Martin McMahon was like, oh, absolutely, Tony, that's exactly what they need to do. And he's like, but you know, the other thing that we need to do is, um, you know, we, we need a vote because it could be 50 plus one doesn't matter. The discussion's being had and the politicians will only have the discussion if there's, and then he starts, he gets cut across and he's like, you're doing it now, Martin. Like, you're being that person right now. You're leading this conversation. You, you don't, you shouldn't even be talking. It's like, and they just like yeah. end up having like, eventually having the exact same point. But like, he's cutting across him to interrupt him <laughs> by saying like, it was just so weird. It was like, it was a type of thing where you feel like, you know, when you're treating it like somebody is on the attack mm. and it's like, well, they're not on the attack, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's he's it. your mate. He's having a conversation with you that's and it. they're going to break it down. And they're know? like slightly developing on your idea. Yeah, yeah. And you're like losing the plot. Yeah. It was funny though. And it was because like, once I got to the end, Martin McMahon hadn't raised his voice or gotten angry with Tony at all. And so the whole thing about it getting heated was completely one-sided. <laughs> and then the comment about how like, it was like my uncle's arguing. I was like, Really? Yeah. Is it like when your uncle just gets yelled at by your dad and you just <laughs> just kind of goes, yep, yeah, yeah, cool, you know? This is your uncle sitting stony face like, against the wall, just being like <laughs> berated by your dad. Just being like... <laughs> it's funny because like Martin is like pure, like, I think he's got like, he knows what he thinks and he kind of articulates it in a very strong way. Mm. And, um... And I would say he doesn't like suffer fools or anything like he'd have like, you know, but I've yet to see him like, like roaring at somebody and kind of trying to argue with them in the same way, mm. you know, mm. uh, not that there's a problem with that. I really like the podcast, like I say, and um, it's too small a circle to be ripping, ripping anybody out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just see the look on James's face of just like, you're so pathetic. No, you can't just. <laughs> Um, I'm just you can't just you give st- out about this podcast. I'm just surprised you'd stand up for a network like that and all their podcasters. <laughs> you think that um, you think that podcasters are above criticism? <laughs> and, uh, well, and I have a podcast for you. It's called what's it called? Pack, Don't do Pack it, woman. <laughs> uh, it's gone now. It's done. Yeah, that I read on hiatus. Tony Groves, man. Tony Groves threw Linda Hayden under the bus and then didn't even get the reward he was looking for. He put out a thing being like we do not stand for racism on Tony Shack and we will not platform racism but we thank Linda Hayden for all her good mm-hmm. work and she will always be a friend. Yeah. And it's like so and then people are like so you fired her but you're thanking her for her work and you're acknowledging yeah. that she's racist and he was like he just didn't do it hard enough. Do you know what I mean? Like he threw it on yeah. the bus. And then let's where we start from the beginning. Yeah. As in to try and lead people into like what the whole, what the hell happened. Yeah. My point is just, I want to start like from the beginning beginning because I because all there's there's characters who overlap uh, with yeah. this stuff as well. This is a big and one. And like this is me. Yeah. Uh 
what would be the framework for this? It's like... <laughs> I know, it's going to be a fucking minefield. It's just this... Because like, I was thinking about this all week because I really wanted to talk about it. And then I've been battling with myself, like, of, like... Is there even a way to talk about it? But I think it's more I'm commenting... Commenting? Commenting on the discourse overall, which I just found kind of, like... I don't know. It, it was a real... This week was actually, like... I, and I'm not... This is so stupid, but honest to God... <laughs> Dare I even say this? I was actually talking about this with my fucking therapist. Yeah. Right? Like, I was literally like, I need to go to a sympathetic person and bounce some of these ideas off of, you know, and these thoughts. Because I was like... And your therapist is like, what's Twitter? Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is all... But the thing is, like, it's none of these people are, like, elected officials. But they're all, like... No, absolutely not. ...involved somewhat in various forms of politics and activism. To yeah. greater or lesser extent. So here's basically an Irish Twitter drama in, you know, in like spread out like some sort of fucking Greek tragedy. Yeah. A million different like. That's but it. like what a, the, the thing, I, I one thing I want to do is that we didn't bring it up on the podcast. I told you off pod before, but uh, the first thing would be back. Um, in January 2021. There's a woman called Emma Jane. God, I can't remember her name. Emma Jane Murphy or Emma Jane Dempsey. Mm. Emma Jane Dempsey, I think. And um, she was like, um, you know, she's uh, she was brought. We talked about her on the podcast before, actually, because she was the one who had her um, abuser. You know, it was he was a paedophile, and he got written a letter of oh, kind yeah. of basic clemency from the Can Corla, mm. and she was looking for an apology from him and some sort of thing about how we can like address this and he's like I don't think I'm going to be doing that <laughs> you know like um say, he's like say it again? well they were looking for they were like look you did this we know you've done it there's nothing that can be done about that now but we need to make sure that it doesn't happen again so can you come out as like either the head of some sort of campaign or some sort of apology or just kind of spearhead something where it's like you know we need to think more seriously about abusers and, you know, and, and people and the ways in which they can be enabled or supported by figures, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, well, I can't do that because I'm the Ken Corla and that would be showing some sort of partisanship or whatever. Right. And then this was, we brought this up at the time because he then sent a letter personally to Arlene Foster apologising for the tweet to Brian Stanley. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so Emma Jane Dempsey, I started following her around that time and then something that happened, I'm just going to make sure her name is Emma Jane Dempsey. Um, and just what you're doing, yeah. like, I know you're not saying, right, but just so everyone listening knows, it's like, mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about like, you know, People have been abused. Uh, yes. So that, like, we're not obviously questioning it. Oh, God, no. No. I know no, you're not like saying this I'm just letting everyone know that even though we're making fun of people. <laughs> I'm not making fun of We will be. And, like, we're going to Oh, be, yeah. There's people we will be making fun of. We're but not, like, not, like yeah. making fun of them for that reason. And we're also not, like, questioning the validity of their stories. But a lot of the people in their story are also absolute headbangers who, uh... <laughs> are terminally online so that's that's what's going to be happening just in case you think that if we're making fun of someone we are you know un trying to undermine them completely but we are not I think it's because like okay so I got onto Twitter and then it was because of the uh, abortion referendum and I started following people and then kind of got to a stage where you started like I remember I was listening to Chapo and then I was like, maybe I should follow some of these guys. And then I started broadening it out even more. And then what come what kind of came very much later, surprisingly way, way later, was like certain characters that you're following overlapping with each other yeah. and having certain disagreements where you're suddenly like, you know, what what isolated that thing with Emma Jane Dempsey, um, for that is her name, is completely like abhorrent and awful and disgusting. And, um, but then what ended up happening was something came up in relation to race, okay? Yes. And it was how, like, anybody who's being abused should head to the guards immediately yeah. and report it. And, um, so black people, uh, were getting in the replies, so going like, well, you know, that's actually not really an option for a lot of people whose immigration status is very precarious. And actually the guards are not that fucking great yeah. uh, either, honestly. And um, and there are also people who were just against the carceral system in general. Mm. 
and and anyway Emma Jane Dempsey did not react particularly well <laughs> to this and just started like giving out to these people and blocking them and muting them and calling them wrong and then she said that's it I'm not doing any more activism ever again oh, yeah. and then she like deleted that. her account and then she appeared like a few weeks later you know again on another account and so a lot of activists in those communities were particularly kind of like hurt by that stuff and I was following the replies and I didn't see anything that would have you know led to that reaction if I'm honest you know but then there's another part of it is you know I don't want to be like treating people like they're porcelain dolls mm. but it's like maybe this this person is responding in a way that we might find unusual because of like shit loads of trauma that I've absolutely no idea how to even yeah you know. but isn't that sort of true everybody do you know what I mean I guess I mean I just some of the I stuff get, I was I hearing it was saying. kind of like it could have been yeah. like a triggering event but like yeah I mean like you know I'm not saying she was right I'm just saying like sometimes what happens is the response is taking like wow well I guess that's it you know and that becomes justification oh, for I get you they're like wow she could Delete her account, that means she's wrong, as opposed to like, there's another layer. But I go, oh, the next bit is probably the PvP thing. Um, or should it be the Kira Kelly thing? No, I think PvP comes first. Okay, the cool. Well, they're kind of concurrent. Yeah. But, um, I'll tell the PvP thing, you tell the Kira Kelly thing. You tell the PvP thing. I don't really know much about the Kira Kelly. Well, I do, I guess. Uh, like, back in... Um, then I'll tell the PvP thing now. And then you. Oh, yeah, go for it. Right. Do it. Uh, so, there's an organization called Merge. And it stands for Minority Ethnic Reproductive Justice. There's a group aimed at getting, like, you know, minority ethnic people uh, access to the services. Like, reproductive rights services, you know? Uh, they also seem to be completely insane. Like, they just seem to be, like, terminally online, all over the place. And there's this guy in PvP, People for Profit. Uh, they're also associated with uh, BPI. Mm. That's not for Black People Ireland. Black Pride Ireland. That was started yeah. over the summer. That's a bit more... That's a bit more sane than Black People Ireland. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like... It was a grassroots organisation, apparently. Uh, I don't know much about it, you know. But, so this guy from PvP, one of the younger members, I think he's like, what, 22? He's like 21. He, like, he's he crazy. He tweeted young. at them and he was like, uh, BPI raised 30 grand over the last year. Mm. And like, we don't know where it's gone. Like, he's not even like, we don't know where it's gone. He's just like, what? It'd be interesting he's like, to what know. happened to it? And he he's said. He's just like, it'd be interesting yeah. to know what it was spent on. And then like, your one from Marge goes at him. And she is like, stuff that I you'd have been white can't even repeat like it was the most vi she's black <laughs> as well it was like the most vitriolic like she was like who like who are you to ask why are you defending the white guy and then she sends him a picture of like a monkey in a suit yeah and, and then like, monkey in shackles as well and some yeah. other like words they obviously him, like a coon and <laughs> yeah. the n-word and all this sort of stuff and like really going in on him and then there's like this one what's her name I can't remember it's like Wazak isn't it yeah, yeah. And she's like Japanese American. Yeah, and she comes in and starts telling him that like he signed with the wrong race, all this sort of stuff. Oh wait, and sorry, we misgendered. I forgot. Did we just misgender? Who? The person who was sending in the um, the posts. Oh yeah, they. They but, uh, apologies. They were like extremely racist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were extremely racist. Yeah. and extremely abusive towards this guy Dara, and they were like not letting it circle, and then. Your one, your Japanese American one was like, um, like saying that because he was biracial. No, she didn't say that. She didn't say that. No, they said it. Right. Non binary, but it gets complicated. But essentially, um, uh, the it, Japanese. This went on for days. Yeah, well, yeah, like two days. It was like. And he was just like, <laughs> I just want to know where the money is. I'm not even criticizing <laughs> anyone. And they were like, how dare you question us? Did you like, did you mention as well that the reason he was asking on Twitter was because their social media accounts were completely all deleted or like gone? That's it. They weren't. De yeah, and he was like, no one responds, and I yeah. can't get an email, and so I just had to turn to Twitter because I wanted an answer. Yeah, and they're like, um, you know, 
this is literal violence by questioning this they kept using this phrase what was it uh harmful doubt yes yeah they were like you're instigating harmful doubt and you're making people question the narrative of minority ethnic I would have thought the people who weren't being transparent about how 30k was spent were doing that but you know exactly and they were just harassing this guy for literally two days straight and he every time he's just like I'm not criticizing anybody or at least I won't (laughs) but the weirdest thing was that loads of white people were getting on the side of marriage and like they were criticizing other white people for defending their friend who was getting racially <laughs> I know that was the funny thing because like because that was so weird that was the one that threw me so initially I go on I see this picture I'm like that is disgusting and appalling mm-hmm. and awful and then I decided to go onto that person's account to see what they had posted and they were just like um they were just laughing that all this like look at all the white people liking that you got to think how how good is your argument if white people are liking that, you know? And wouldn't be me. And then they liking were liking Dara's post. Yeah, liking Dara's post, and and it's like and laughing at the idea. Like they're so offended by the idea of me sending this to them. Oh my God, you're Ooh. so fragile. And then here's the other thing. The reason it was kind of funny what I brought up earlier on. They were saying like they were bringing up this idea that people, um, white people, are so sensitive, and then when they see this, this somebody sending images like that they need to talk about it with their therapist <laughs> or like or the idea that they're like they're like oh, i just think it really affects me and it really hurts Ooh. me and i was like i am like that and i was kind of like having a real like moment where i was like fuck am, am i wrong for finding Ooh. this like upsetting and then dara like put out a tweet and along with uh, some other guy from pvp and he was just like if you see somebody being racially abusive to me, it really doesn't matter what the color of their skin is. It's like, mm. he's like, just call it out. And like anybody who's saying, oh, I don't want to weigh in and I don't want to get in on this fight or whatever. It was like, you know, I mean, I didn't want to get in on the fight for another reason, which is I just like, it just seems really tedious to be caught in an exchange of tweets like that, you know? Like, yeah. But I was, I was watching some of the tweets and it, but it, this is like one of those like alien versus predator things where you're watching it like whoever wins we lose you know because mm. those people is like are you, you know so so they were saying about Dara they were giving out like oh Dara like god you're so sensitive why are you so like this what's wrong with you that you can mm. get so bent out of shape about me sending you this calm the fuck down you know and mm. then at the same time some uh, white woman gets in the replies to them and uh, misgenders them um because you know whatever i mean there's no reason you know it's just like <laughs> well it's not, it's not clear what their gender is like it they're female present yeah so it was kind of like it was obviously a mistake yeah so but then this person goes oh my god you just misgendered me and then all of a sudden those same people who are saying how could you be so sensitive were then getting on this person uh this woman for being a transphobe they were like mm. oh you're a transphobe you're a fucking transphobe you know and yeah. then and then the other thing was like I was saying is like they're the ones talking about how like God get over this sort of language and then also calling him asking about the money violence it was like mm. nothing means anything I guess you know <laughs> like, yeah. hey, this is me I didn't finish the point about the alien versus predator where it's no matter who wins we lose um, basically that woman got in the comments um, and then before you know was saying like oh how can you bully Dara and then the non-binary person uh, says like how about you like shut the fuck up you don't know what you're talking about and then she goes excuse me I do know what I'm talking about I actually have a degree in race studies or something like this from whatever and it was like oh man oh, <laughs> please maybe do sit this one out but then you know the transphobia thing after that happened after that but the whole thing is is a cluster freak huh <laughs> the justification for calling it violence was that in theory, it could bring Merge and BPI into disrepute. Yeah. And the work they do protecting, you know, their members would be undone, which would be violent. Which is a stretch, <laughs> to say the least. Like... Yeah. Um, like, the, the it, other it, thing about it is, is like, like, from Dara's point of view, I mean, I don't really know, like, the history, if they had some sort of back and forth before, maybe they're like, you know... Maybe this is kind of further escalation of some sort of tensions that already existed. But um, one of the things that happened was like, Black Lives Matter happens, okay? 
an Ooh. organization gets set up and then 30k goes into the account and then it's unaccounted for okay and Ooh. then you're just kind of like is that not also would you not be suspicious of that and feel like that's undermining the movement to have like an organization that didn't exist and suddenly exists pockets a bunch of change and then you never hear from them again it's like yeah but i mean that's why you know it's None of this is in good faith. Yeah. You know what I mean? You said like, it such a good way. You were talking about your fringe. I, I think you should... The the fringe story. Unless you can't. Sorry. What was the fringe story? You were saying in Galway, you know, where you were meant to show up for this thing. Oh, that lunatic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a show in the, in the Galway fringe. Yeah, it's a really random... Uh, the story, anyway, is that I... They wouldn't give me the date for my show. And I was like, trying to ring them and email them and they wouldn't get back to me. So eventually I tweeted at them and the organizer, I can't remember her name, rang me up and literally screamed down the phone with me for about half an hour. And she was like, you made the social media woman cry. You're like, you know, you could get our funding cancelled, all this sort of stuff. Complete overreaction. Mm. And then it was only when I threatened to like pull out and like ring our sponsors that she chilled out. Yeah, but it's just, I think it's relevant just because, like, that's what happens. It's this kind of, like, they're pissed off that he made it public. But if we'd gone through the avenues that he was supposed to go through, and like, what you should have done is you should have emailed this, and you should have waited, like, however yeah. many months for a response. You should have done this. And it was like, these are tactics that you deploy frequently, and you actually did later in the week, you know? So it's that's like, it. why are you critical of these, you know? And it's like, and, and then like why are you using it as a reason to, because, you know, whatever about Wazik, you know, she, like was angry about it and given out about it and she commented underneath a post that was very racially insensitive um like was racist and didn't comment on that or call people out or you know whatever yeah. and um but the other one was was this person was saying like after a certain point the uh non-binary person was saying um that Dara also didn't know what was relevant for the community because he was only uh, he was only uh, no, he was, he was biracial point. sorry mm. yeah and it was like I just I found that so but then it, and again like you were saying about this it was like oh, all the white people liking that and I was like well, there's a lot of fucking white people liking yours it's yeah, like like what is this it's like yeah how do you expect to have a movement of racial justice in Ireland without like they don't yeah like they the idea that it's a genuine movement isn't true. Mm. Um, like maybe they do some work, but there's no element of they want to transform anything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're more interested in just argument and scoring points on Twitter. Like literally that's all they're interested. Like yeah, nobody and, yeah. nobody reads their Twitter. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then this guy tweets at them and they're like, How dare you drag our name through the mud? It's like, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. You're like 1% of your thousand followers or whatever might read this and yeah, not think anything yeah. of it. Do you know what I mean? They're just interested in the Twitter argument. They're into the, into the rest and like the spectacle of it, you know? Yeah. Well, that was, but you know, that, that was something was somebody was saying to me. It was like, you know, I don't see these people at the protests. I don't see them showing up. It's like they only exist online and they exist in this kind of fury. And, you know, I guess it gets exactly. amplified over... The course is, but it's, it's not to undermine like well no in this case definitely to undermine <laughs> but like they got some some better chum during the week so i guess we should probably just because we're r running up against the clock yeah we should so probably move on to the next part of this saga you know yeah which is an interaction between radio host kira kelly mm -hmm. and uh professional woke scald um <laughs> linda Hayden. yeah I mean, that's and social democrat. Uh, what was it? Electoral. Yeah, she was um, try to get her. Yeah, back in like. Election. Yeah, but years ago as well. That's the other thing is people say like, "Oh, sock Dems, are you you're not going to dis." Anyway, so let's talk about this. So uh, Linda Hayden, part of the Victims Alliance, I think she founded it and whatever. Um, not whatever. Sorry, I mean that's that's no small thing. I'm just saying like, um, There's no need to be nervous about this. Okay. <laughs> I do feel kind of nervous because I am I have sympathy up until a point yeah. and I I'm kind of like I said talking about this discourse and when you talk about it you risk becoming like somebody on like LBC over in the UK about political correctness and free speech no you don't and, you know, we don't we're, we're, there's no <laughs> chance of us becoming yeah 
There's so, people on whatever, I don't know what that is, but they're probably like very bought into the idea of, you know, disregarding yeah. all this sort of stuff. Whereas we're just seeing the bad faith behind it in this sense. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. So like, you know, uh, long story short, uh, Linda Hayden is a, a victim of sexual uh, violence and mm. she uh, was going on a radio program that Kira Kelly was presenting and um, she didn't feel comfortable with Kira Kelly mentioning this on the show. Yeah. But I, I don't know what had happened, but ultimately Kira Kelly did mention it and it was a whole thing where she was kind of like very upset yeah. about the whole thing. And, so K- yeah. Kira Kelly mentioned that Linda Hayden had been sexually assaulted and yeah. Linda said, you know, my family heard about this on the radio. Yeah. You know, I hadn't told my family uh, yeah. and they had to find out this way. And I think regardless of anything else, like Kira Kelly should have checked. Oh, you yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. Like, because it later then comes out that the way it was phrased, you would think that Lin- Kira Kelly broke some sort of silence or like, yeah, because that, that was it. Had it. never been spoken of before. But that is, that is essentially what Linda has been kind of saying for the past while. Like I've actually mentioned it on the podcast previously because I was like not really aware of like the, the stuff that she had done before. And I thought like, yeah. oh, Kira Kelly outed her. And so yeah. she's been saying this and kind of giving that impression and working as part of the Victims Alliance. And so, um, and, and bringing that up and then at the start of the week she clearly had like a letter that was sent to her by Kira Kelly's solicitor saying to retract that and uh, she just caught, she just screenshotted a section of it posted that on Twitter and allowed everybody to come to their own conclusions that she'd been kind of pressured into it and ultimately like we're not on Kira Kelly's side at all yeah. um, thought she was incredibly insensitive about that shit but you ultimately like the claim is almost sort of like for want of a better word, stance, where it's like, yeah, this was mentioned before, but not in spaces that were quite as public or were things, or in a, in a space that she was comfortable with and, you know, the, the whole thing about being allowed to control your own narrative, etc. Do you know? Yeah. Um, so that happened. And then people started spreading this hashtag of like, I stand with Linda. And mm. then this account at Newsworthy um, started and, like... And another, yeah. and another account. Yeah. You know, people were... Uh, we don't know this, but I'm pretty sure it was. Maybe I shouldn't say it, but people were saying, hey, yeah. "Does that work in Ireland?" Allegedly, yeah, it was Kira Kelly's husband that he had some involvement in this, and you know, yeah. but there was like prior, there was other people using this opportunity to go back and pull up um, tweets. Yeah, and but boy, did it work! Like I've never seen a psyop work that cleanly. <laughs> like they were like, "Linda Hayden is causing us trouble," you yeah. know. We did it wrong. We're going to serve for defamation. We're also going to try to ruin her character and turn people against her. Yeah. And like, ultimately, she was like, you would be on her side if hearing the story. And then they go back and they retweet insanely racist jokes. Like, yeah. Because from the start, I was like, oh, they're bad, but they're not like, they're like jokes some old I would tell you at a, a bus stop. Mm. You know what I mean? And then the more that came out, the worse. Yeah, and it just kept kind of escalating. But I mean, again, then, you you know, you see the dates on the tweets and it's like, there's some person just like every so, like, who's doing that? Was that their full time job for like a week to go back and pull up these fucking tweets? That's it. I know. Like, I don't literally don't know how you would scroll back that far. Yeah. And then like, Uh, they were also literally from like 2012. Yeah. To 2013. Yeah, and it was like, they were bad. They were awful, and there's no defending them. Um, well, I mean... I don't even know necessarily about the claim of, like, growing and maturing and becoming, because it was, like, the same thing we've said about Vradker. It's like, he was, you know, he was a young, young man at 38 when he decided that he didn't like poor people, or he, he actually thought poor people were okay, you know? Yeah, but the difference is, like, Vradker was, you know, Minister of Health. Or like yeah. he was an elected official when he was saying this. Yes, yeah, that's it's like it. she was tweeting stuff. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and yeah, she was making jokes that were obviously in bad taste, but like, doesn't not doing anyone any harm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and um, I think the other part about it was let's read one. Will we no, the censored <laughs> version. I'm not doing it. it. Some of the ones were like she talked about getting Ebola off black people. Yeah. And, uh, uh, what was the other one? Oh, yeah, just like doing a Chinese 
impression. She was just like pretending to be Chinese for some reason. Yeah. Did you see that one? No. She was like just tweeting for replacing all the L's with ors. Hmm. I love it like I don't know. Lazy. But I mean Yeah, what I don't know what I think about it. Um like Okay, let's let's I just want to move on to the next bit of it because like basically the same people that were from that earlier story earlier from the people mm. before profit merge. Um some of them, I don't know if they were all from merge, but they started weighing in and kind of sharing it around and being like incredibly incensed by the whole thing. And then it was mm. just like this they person a, a white supremacist. Yes, and a racist um I mean racist whatever, it's white supremacist, Fair, you know. But racist, like racist true. White supremacist? <laughs> Mm. I no. There's no way you can call that white supremacy. And then she, but then the other thing that came up, which was more kind of like, but it's so funny because you're seeing like these like these like fragments of conversations, mm. and then it's like, well, case closed. And I was like, can I see like the rest of that? Because there was one where they're like, she racially profiled this gang as, um, she was like, um there was a gang of of sex traffickers or something like that and she called them like a, uh, the Filipino gang and then the woman was like well actually only one of them was Filipino and then that's the only thing that we saw and it was like well yeah. that's it she said they were all Filipino because she was racist like that and then the next thing that they said was and then she insists on going to the police and being carceral about it so she's a carceral feminist I was like yeah well that's your thing like yeah that's very specific yeah you know what I mean that's not generally accepted as even wrong yeah you know what I mean and yeah, no, I mean, it's like, I, that, I would like have issues with it, but like, ideological difference as yeah, opposed to like, exactly. But what you've done evil. is you've just taken something that is racist and then tied it on to something that is your <laughs> thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? It's like, just because you've added those, put those bunch of those two things together, just make both of them racist, you know? Mm. Um, so, so the accusations I mean, are moving from like, she's racist to now that. Um, Victims Alliance is systematically racist. Yeah, and then they also brought up Emma Jane Dempsey from before Christmas when she did that stuff with the other people, you know, and like, and then they're kind of like, oh, white people are going to white people, you know, like they're doing that, th mm. their usual thing, and um, of just rallying around this person and accepting an apology on our on our behalf because that was what happened. Like she came out and she's like, oh, it looks like people are dragging up my old shit, but I, you know, I've grown a lot since then and I, I, I dare any one of you not to have done the same. And then, and about 24 hours later, all of a sudden the response to that was like so negative that she was like, okay, actually seeing the stuff that I said and realizing that I was doing the thing that I've accused other people of, I'm incredibly sorry and mm. I, I want to do... And then the response like I saw underneath that was like, do you think this is sufficient? But she, like the thing is that she wouldn't take that from anyone else. Oh God, no. Like, it really is a thing where... Live by the skull, you die by the skull. <laughs> yeah, like, she's cancelled so many people. And then she comes out and she's like, gives a half-assed apology. And mm -hmm. then tries to give a real one. Like, even this thing of... Like, it's all bad faith. Like, yeah. she doesn't care. She's not really sorry. Uh, and then, like, she apologises. And you want Rosemary Morn, you know, the yeah. child activist. She was like, oh, you know, we worked together for a while and... You know, this is obviously very hurtful to see, but I know you only think you're a good person. Yeah. Whatever. And then she was like, and she was like, thanks. And then everyone was underneath Rosemary being like, you're just a token traveler. That's the thing. It's like, what's a token <laughs> traveler? Like, there's only a few thousand travelers. Like, <laughs> how can you have a token traveler who spent their life engaged in activism? And you're like, That's what really got me, where it was like, but, all the white people liking that and all this stuff. And then black people were like, oh, all the token black people coming out. I was like, what the fuck do you want? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. But like, also white people, like, you obviously had your one from Merit. They were set, calling Dara token. Hmm. But then you also had half a white Irish Twitter doing that as well. Yeah. Same with the Rosemary. It wasn't like another traveller called her a token traveller. It was a white person. Yeah. Because, or a settled person or whatever. But they're, because they see a traveller, they want the traveller to have the same politics as they do. Yeah. And then when they don't, when they're like, a traveller would never forgive it in the hate for making these jokes about travellers. Mm -hmm. And then they see someone do it, they're like, well, obviously that's not a real traveler. That's just a joke. <laughs> and similar with a black person, it's like yeah, they just they want these groups to be homogenous, and then when they go against them, they undercut them. Yeah, and, and it shows shows that they're not actually interested 
and engaging with those communities. Uh-huh. They're just interested in like feeling good about themselves and getting points. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But then like what happens is the Victim Alliance seems to go have gone on like hiatus or their Twitter mm. is down. Linda Hayden got rid of her Twitter. Tony Groves yeah. kicked her off of the, well, he didn't quite kick her off. Like like let we don't know what happened internally, but ultimately it was kind of like I guess the it podcast is, needs to go on hiatus, you know? Yeah, and his statement it definitely gave the impression that it was the tortoise shack and made the uh Yeah. Which is mad. Like what is the tortoise shack's reasoning? Like, think about it. Like, they're friends with Linda Hayden. Yeah. Right? They think that her podcast, whatever it is, does good work. Yeah. They've listened to 20 episodes of it. I think it's like 60. Something ridiculous, yeah. you know? And then someone, literally all has happened is someone's retweeted a bunch of Linda Hayden's old racist things and yeah. gone after her on Twitter. And then tortoise shack are like, we can't support this anymore. We hear you. We are, but anyway, they were. We for, hear you. We are throwing her under the bus. <laughs> but like, we stand with Linda during the week, and then by the end of the week, well, podcast gone. It's like a very shitty week for Linda Hayden. And to be honest, like, I am not, like, I don't like. This is the thing: is that when people anticipate your argument, all of a sudden you feel like, "Fuck, am I this stereotypical white person where I have mm. my prejudices and biases, and I don't overlook, I don't look over them?" But after a week of thinking about it, I actually much. I, I kind of have to believe that people progress and change. Like, and I, you know, I felt like that would have been a right, a pretty good opportunity to work through some of the stuff on the podcast and talk about these things. Mm. Or maybe I'm an idiot. I mean, because like, because I was, what I meant to say is the Twitter goes down, Victims Alliance Twitter down, all this type of stuff. Mm. And then they were like, unbelievable I can't believe she deleted her Twitter now all those people who are talking to her over this are, are suddenly going to be you know in the lurch I was like well, you, fuck, you hated the organisation and now you're annoyed that they disbanded the organisation you know yeah because uh, weirdly like like one of the weird things was Linda Hayden would like contact like say with the what's his name your man from RT2 yeah what the fuck was his name who someone showed me a video uh and it was like him hosting a Me Too discussion for what he <laughs> and, uh, Old McDermott that was it sorry. yeah uh. and, and, uh, and it dude, it was such a f- weird panel because it was like him he was the chair uh-huh. and then it was like a barrister human rights activist I can't remember who the other one was maybe even some of victims I don't know from some victim support group and then oh what's his name I've forgotten his name Alan McGuire Really? Yeah. And it was like, barrister, human rights activist, you know, victim supporter, t- Twitter comedian, Alan McGuire. <laughs> and it's like, he's only on there because like, he makes woke tweet. You know yeah. I mean? Like, not to drag him, but it's like. <laughs> no, no, not at all. It's just, it's just like. Str- a strange addition. It's a quite I mean? a motley crew of people. Get Michael Fry up there while you're at it, you know? Exactly. Like, they just have a woke vibe about them. Because it is like a pretty tense thing because it's like it's two fucking cis head white men talking about this, but it's also like fucking. I mean, these are. I don't know. I feel. Wouldn't you be. Wouldn't it be worse to not talk about it? That's what it almost feels like. It's like, do you want to solve the problems? And it was like, why do you keep trying to cut people out who want to be engaged in it and to be learning and doing better? And if people have demonstrated that, then like. Like, I just find the stuff that they were saying is like, she's like, well, she's racist, that's that, we need to look at all the cases that she looked at, and it's like, was she like Una McGurk just getting up there and saying migrants need to be, you know, go home or whatever, yeah. you know? Like, but no, but like, that's the point, is that to them, it's, they're only doing it for retweets. Mm. Like, with these groups you see on Twitter, they're only doing it for retweets. But I also think there are people that get swept up in the wake of that because I see, see people who do genuinely care and feel affected by it and they're just like there's people who don't give a shit like I don't think that non-binary person gives a shit I think that they like like to weigh in and cause a bit of fucking chaos because that's like they're on Twitter it's like this is my downtime but yeah. then there's other people I've seen who are like retweeting her and they're just getting f- uh Mm. retweeting them and they're just getting fired up you know um yeah man like and this is like it's really difficult because it's just a fucking minefield um 
Like in one way, it's all very straightforward. It you is. I mean? It's just like my. See, this is the other thing I want to talk about, which is that um, they're not beholden to those rules because they don't give a shit. Whereas Linda actually is. Yeah, like so. Do you think Linda gives a shit? Because she does spend a lot of time just going after people. Well, yeah. I think she cares. I think she cares a lot. Like you know, and uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, like she obviously cares about certain things. You know, like you don't start Victims Alliance if you don't give a shit. But like. I'm saying, she, like, she's a sock dams white woman, so, <laughs> so her thinking is going to be pretty narrow. But I also think that she is open to learning on stuff. But also, there's an emotional element where somebody comes at you, and it's like, think about the, again the week that's in it. It's like these tweets start coming up, and it's like her response is probably like coming. But, it, uh, but whatever. Yeah. But if she knows that about herself. Yeah. Why is she hot? Why is she so critical of other people, in such a non-constructive way? Like, yeah. She obviously, can, yeah. you don't start Victims Alliance if you don't care about. I'm not saying her work is in bad faith. Yeah. She obviously, is trying to help people who are in her position, right? Mm-hmm. And then all the stuff that happens on Twitter, where she's just constantly going after people, that's purely for tweets. You know what I mean? And retweets. I think it's just you know the thing about social media that we also forget about is like how addictive it is and the stuff that happens on it it's like you actually sometimes get swept up and 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 also how useless it is in affecting change in a lot of ways as in like you have an outcome in your head that you want to see happen and then you just become devoted to it but because twitter just won't allow that to happen and it constantly keeps refreshing it's like i've seen people over the past 24 hours like this is the last thing i'm going to say on this two hours later one more thing i just had thought mm, about this it's mm. like it's just but, but they're doing it for cloud um i don't know i'm not sure i think some people are but i don't know if all of them are and i think you know it's the clout that that is happening off of the back of these i think in some ways is unconscious but also because it's become second nature to just you know externalize your internal monologue then like this type of stuff happens and people are filled with contradictions so um why would she go after somebody in that way and not realize that she might herself be held to the same standard and then when that happened to not kind of handle it a bit more gracefully you know it's because um, she doesn't really believe it hmm. like she like if she didn't even like she acknowledged herself her first apology wasn't a real one like it's just she's trying to get away with it like she doesn't care like None of this stuff, like on Twitter, is is just people. It's just people point scoring. I just you don't know? think like, you can discount somebody having a shitty day as well. Do you know what I mean? And feeling like, and then sometimes the responses to it, it's like, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Do you know? And um, what what do you mean? Like with Tony Groves, where it's like, this is as much as I want to comment on this, and then people underneath it like. This isn't sufficient. And this isn't. But, that's, it's but like, that's because he tried to have it both ways. Like the issue with Tony Groves thing is that he was like, "I condemn racism, but I don't condemn her." Yeah. And it's like you can't say that because you can't stand by someone and you know get rid of their podcast. You know what I mean? Like he didn't make, he didn't land on the side. Like Tony Groves could have just said, "Um, Lindsay you know, taking some time off," and yeah, we'll see or he how could have said. I don't think she should delete her podcast because I think she does good work. But instead, he just did this weird half thing where he bowed to the pressure, but didn't. He doesn't actually agree. He's just trying mm. to follow, you know. Like he doesn't get the point. Mm. Um. Like if he likes the podcast, keep it. If he doesn't, get rid of it. If he thinks that her stuff undermines the podcast, get rid of it. But like he yeah. didn't say any of that. He was just like, race was bad. So. I, but I also think it's the other thing I was saying where it's like when somebody predicts your behavior then suddenly you become very cagey about it like the idea was like it did affect me to see this uh black man receive an image of a monkey in shackles Mm. like i was upset by that yeah and then they were like you have no right to be upset by that you're a fucking middle class white person who doesn't know Mm -hmm. and you're probably going to go to therapy which i didn't and talk about Mm. it with your fucking therapist and god aren't you sad that you think this and it's like and it, it you know so that keeps happening where it's like all those kind of avenues get shut off to you in some way because you know you're stuck in this trap of like we have to listen to all these groups 
And so listening to them means any opinion that you come to without kind of consulting with people is wrong. So if the majority of people are telling you like, like, I just feel like I would find it easier to have an opinion about this if it wasn't a case of like, oh, look at white people coming in and saying it's okay for her to do this. I was like, I'm not saying mm. it's okay. I'm saying like, like a lot of people have been there and if we want to keep getting the circle bigger and, you know, make sure there's more of us than there are of the people who are, you know, looking to... Yeah, but they have no interest in that second yeah, thing. I know, but that's it. And that's why I think like, it's kind of foolish to kind of feed that mob. But also I can see the temptation because it's like... I guess it's Twitter feels like real life and you kind of get swept up in it and mm. you know you you feel like you have to prescribe to the thing that you've accused other people of but like it reminded me so much of um like cuz one I cuz you know we're going to narrow now I think you need to head off and soon but like uh it reminded me so much of the episode we did on Davy Riley which I for mm. some reason felt way more comfortable doing you know where it's like this is a friend of mine and I believe all the women and I was hurt and hearing about the stuff but like the same, a same person who I mentioned in that episode, remember I was saying somebody emailed me and was like, just to let you know that you're still friends with this person online. And it was mm. like, fuck off. Like, <laughs> I've had like, what, ten, two hours to deal with like a guy I've known for the guts of a decade and you're telling me to just ditch him. Do you know, it's like, yeah, like yeah. what the stuff that they're asking you to do is completely inhuman as far as I'm concerned. Mm. They're asking you to immediately just have a reaction and then you have the reaction and then it's still not good enough. And I just, I, it's such a complicated position to be in because as a kind of like, you know, it's not only Tony Grove's podcast um, on and Linda's on the echo chamber or on the mm. tortoise shack. It's just made, it's just hard when you have all these other pressures from people. And, um, like, I think a lot of these pressures are self-imposed. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, that's it. It's hard yeah. for me to see what real pressure was on Tony Groves, apart from like a market pressure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a weird one. Cause his apology really got, or his post really got me the wrong way because I felt like he was trying to have it both ways. Where he's mm -hmm. trying to say, like, for moral reasons, we're getting rid of her, but for moral reasons, we like her. And he's sort of bowing to a pressure in a weird way where he, when he's not actually sorry. You know, I guess my point is that it's not a very principal thing. No, to me. it's not a very admirable. And kind of I think stance. a lot of this stuff comes from, like, people not really having very strong principle you know mm -hmm. or maybe the principles are misguided like even this thing of people you know encouraging you to listen to groups yeah the idea as far as I always understood it was like you have your opinions and you try to inform them by listening yeah. to the people affected but what has come to mean particularly on Twitter is that you should have no opinion or you should be willing to completely jettison your own opinion when someone in a group tells you otherwise yeah and that doesn't work like you can't live a coherent life like that yeah. and that leads you to end up doing things that don't make sense mm -hmm. like saying uh, we stand with Layton but we, we stand with Linda Hayden but we don't like racists or getting rid of a podcast like that's a completely incoherent position to take mm -hmm. uh, so like when Merge tells you that you can't have an opinion because you're white that is incoherent yeah it makes sense to say I'm more effective about this I know more yeah so I feel like I know what I'm talking about and you don't. But this idea of like white people don't get involved uh, in a blanket way, it's, 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 I don't think anyone who wants real world change would ever say that. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, if I'm going to be honest, especially not in the fucking island of Ireland, it's like just the palest fucking people on the planet. You know what I mean? It's like, That's I, mean, it. I, I, like I just feel like you're really cutting off a lot of people who are very willing to help you, but might have some shortcomings and shit to get through, you know? Mm. Like, like I'm reading a bit about Lennon at the moment, and like he makes it very clear that, like, he supports a workers' revolution. Mm. But you have all these other groups, you have like him, is like this uh, middle class member of, I think we call them like the intelligentsia or something. Mm. And then they're like the serfs or the peasants. 
And you had all these different groups. And he saw, like, the need was to work together. But, like, certain groups led. Yeah. But, like, he didn't prevent himself from having an opinion. Mm. He just tried to inform that opinion. And, like, those always seem to be the very successful people. Whereas the ones who go against that... Yeah. Um, aren't. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of the times they have no interest in being successful. And that's just what I see when I look at things like marriage. It's like, they're more interested. I mean, I just find the whole... I, I, the whole thing this week was, again, like a massive crossover episode of all the people I follow on Twitter. And then this kind of like tense drama of like, well, I agree with that bit and I don't agree with that bit. And I'm just observing it. And I was like, do I even have an opinion? And I was like, well, fucking, I, I feel like in some cases it'd be an abdication not to have an opinion. And I really, as much as I would risk being some sort of ignorant fucking white guy it's the same time it's like well better in than out you know because otherwise you're not actually um pushing anything forward or contributing in any way Ooh. um not that i am now by going over twitter discourse uh but i do think that there is something to be said about like if you want to increase your camp or like to try and build a movement and bigger things it's like we need to figure out a way to, um, I guess, jettison this thing where everyone, somebody gets destroyed when this stuff happens. And I mean, people say that that's an exaggeration, but like in the space of a week, she like lost her podcast. The Victims Ooh. Alliance that she set up is gone. It's like she's off with Twitter, well, Vic you know. Victims Alliance isn't gone. Do you know what I mean? That's like a registered charity. That's probably going to continue. It's just. Do you think? It could. I don't know. Like, I've been looking at. I did a Google for Linda Hayden. None mm. of this is coming up, except on, like, gripped. You know what I mean? That's the other thing, not, gripped as well. Not it's to like, say that it couldn't. I'm just saying it hasn't, yeah. Um, that is one of the funnier things, isn't it? Where it's like, they're going like, oh, look at all the white people liking this. Uh, wouldn't be me. And I was like, well, look at gripped, writing an article about what you're talking about and yeah. sharing it. It's like, do you really like that company? It's like, why the guilt by association thing really does not fucking work, you know? But, but like, the... um. What was I going to say? This, when you said we need to jettison this thing of people getting destroyed, like, for a lot of these groups, including, like, a lot of, what I, it's all I've ever seen Linda Hayden do, and, like, other people, it's integral to their mission. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if you were to drop it, they would have nothing left because their whole thing is built around Twitter activism. Yeah. You know? Um, like, yeah, it just is like these people all seem off. <laughs> yeah, the no. they all the seem whole horrible. thing. It's like it made me miss like I've I've like never wanted to be in a physical space more in my entire fucking life. Like Ooh. just with people. It's like I don't want you anymore. I don't want to look at your bullshit. <laughs> like I would like to feel like we were doing something as opposed to tearing strips off of each other digitally and Ooh. nothing nothing is gained. Um, anyway, whatever. Um, but it was, you know, that was the Twitter saga. That was the whole thing uh, that happened. I mean, what do you think? What do you think how we depicted that? Good, bad? Or? Do we? I think we summed it up accurately. As best it could. I mean, like, I haven't even entirely figured out my own thoughts on it, but it happened this week. So it was worth kind of mm. diving into. And, um, I, I'm probably going to think more on it, but like, and I definitely have more... My opinions have formed more since the start of the week, but they haven't finished forming. Mm. So maybe we'll come back to this, but I don't know. Um, but all the... Yeah, that's it. I don't think... If I said anything, I'd just risk talking in circles again. It could be wild if over the back of this, you saw the Victims Alliance completely, you know, removed. Actually, I don't know. I don't know anything about their work. I don't know why I'm saying that. Um, Some of the stuff that they had online was the messages and the stuff was like was a I little didn't read bit so much of that. yeah I know there was a bit where it was like uh, Linda Hayden was pressuring somebody to go to the guards and this person claimed that she she did go to the guards on her behalf and stuff and this woman wasn't comfortable with it and a lot of people were pointing to the hypocrisy of like you said that Kira Kelly wasn't in charge of your story and you were taking it upon yourself to have this person's story you know right and then these were all in Twitter DMs which are now of course completely gone because of mm. her Twitter account being deleted and um, 
a lot of people are kind of annoyed by that because it didn't show a lot of care to victims and you know but I mean again that was somebody's focus is that type of feminism and they were pursuing that and I just feel is it wrong to say somebody cared a little too much you know and kind of let their kind of eagerness to resolve these things kind of get in the way of what the other person wanted you know I think that is wrong to do okay well then I'm de- <laughs> editing that out <laughs> I know I know what you're saying but I, I do think it's yeah I think not, I'm just practice no I'm I'm like it's difficult for me to kind of parse because I actually did have a lot of time for Linda Hayden even though I thought you know she was a scold like you were saying and she was mm. kind of like um I did I, did, I thought her politics could be very frustrating you know mm. like most sock dems it was kind of like you know these people that were working within the confines of the system and kind of were pointing at like can you believe that this is happening I was like yes why are you in the sock dems you know, like, mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> in January 2021 well that's it that's the podcast uh, this is very often just about the news stories and items that capture our thoughts throughout the week so this seemed too interesting to pass without comment, but uh, I do feel anxious about having weighed in at all. Anyway, let us know your thoughts at CelticGligers at gmail.com or on our Twitter at CelticGligers, which is also our Instagram. For a five or a month, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash CelticGligers. You get an additional episode a week along with a back catalogue of content, such as our review of the Brexit TV movie, um, us talking about Stephanie Preisner's podcast, and the V for Vendetta review, which I think is one of the funnier things we've done. You be the judge. Um, and now we thank those tireless backroom boys and girls who make it all possible. Um, take it away with them thank yous to the patrons. In January 2021. Um, anyway, it's just fucking sad and annoying overall. Yeah. Oh, we better thank our patrons. Let's yeah, do we better thank our patrons. Quick. Huh? We'll do it real quick. Well, I can do it, and you can head off if you want. No, we'll just do it quick. Okay. And when you say quickly, you mean... Uh, two hours. No, five minutes. Five minutes. Timer starts. And right. So if you can't think of one... that We need to break it up into, like, 10, 20 seconds. If you can't think of a name in 10 seconds, then fuck. Uh, let's, can't do okay, it. let's just do anything. No theme. You know what I mean? Okay, cool. No theme. Okay. Thank okay. you to Mickey Finn. Is this a new patron? Uh, I don't know, but Mickey Finn like to drink, you know. Next one. Next one. I was just yeah. He just I think he just signed up. Thank you, nice. Mickey Finn. Thanks, um, Mickey Finn. Joanne uh, Heffernan. That'll be uh, uh, Joanne. Oh man, it's oh. a happening. Yes. Thank you. Next up is Benson, and Benson is like what. Uh, Benson Hedges like No I already did that one last week what Let's about say a, a Stetson Like a hat you wear Like a cool yes. cowboy Yes um, Thank you Stetson Thank you Francis Breen And that'll be like Francis <laughs> Brine And me drinking the brine Out of some Big uh, jar of tuna Yeah That is so disgusting <laughs> That I can't even imagine it <laughs> Just Chugging Next up is Simon Akers So uh, What about Simone Simone Acre and that's just how you might say it in France if you were there Simone Acre yeah yeah cool and then um, next up is Mark Stokes and then it'll be Mark the, Blokes just hanging out with the yeah. fucking some blokes you know and Mark Stick and Poke you know <laughs> okay yeah Mark Stick and Poke it's like, like a picture of a, a cruci- upside down crucifix nice back. Mark Maloney that'll be um uh, bark Maloney the bark of a tree yeah, but like the only the tree. bark of a tree is called Maloney so like it's like you'd be saying hello to the tree and you'd be mm-hmm. like hey tree but you'd be saying hey bark separately because they're separate entities oh yeah yes yes was really well no you wouldn't say hey bark you'd say hey Maloney because that's the name of the bark oh I see yeah Blahin de Burka um what about uh, Scaldi de mm. Korkig Lovely. And it's cork is on fire. No, not that. Sorry, it's it's uh, boiling in the rising tide. Something that hasn't happened yet, rather than something that hasn't happened and was really tragic. Right, um, uh, lovely, scaldy corker. Yeah. What about uh, so for Alan Carroll? What do we got here? Uh, what about 
wingspan cattle. Yeah, like I mean, you know, the, what's, what's the wingspan of a cat? Of a cow? Of a cow? Nothing. No, there's no wings at all. Why did you ask me that? That's what you. Would Why say would you to ask person? such an insane question? <laughs> Up next is Rob Gale, and that'll be robfailblog.org. Yeah, what? what, what? Failblog.org? Yeah. yeah. I used to love that website. So did I. It was a good one. Um, next up, Stephen Bradley. That'll, of course, be... Um, um, Stephen Beaver? and Shandy. What? Nope, not that one. What did you say? Hand Shandy. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's for you to. I mean, mm. I could have said that. We we don't know. Okay, um, next one. Next one, Alison Spittle. I'll be Alison um, Skittles, like uh, the sweet or in bowling, it's just the bowling Skittles, you know. Oh yeah. yeah. Are they called Skittles or are they called pins? Well, they're called pins, but here we kind of sometimes call them Skittles. Okay. Um, Richard Zimmerman. You know, if you break one open, they are full of Skittles. Oh well, that's. That work makes it even better. That works perfectly. Yeah, I did that's kind of ironic, actually. Yeah. Um, Richard Zimmerman. That'll be um, for some what reason. Every co- time I I hear this, I think of like what was Bob Dylan's name originally? Yeah. Am I crazy? Wait. Was it also Zimmerman? It was Zimmerman. What I think it was what about what about Blood or Crip Man? <laughs> that's actually much better. Yeah. You know, it's like is he a Blood or is he a Crip? Well, yeah, or is he to, Robert Zimmerman? To, you know? Get him to say the alphabet, you know? Yeah. Go find out. Bridget Purcell. Uh, that'll be uh, Skidger. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's start. Personality. Skidger Listen, personality. Why don't you skid your personality a bit, okay? That means just uh, keep it down, you know? Yeah, that just means you're nice, you know, when I say <laughs> skid your personality down. Yeah, especially in that tone. Why don't you just skid your personality? <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, Milky Fox. That'll be. Um, what about Trilby? Like the half. The Trilby. Yeah, and he's tipping and his Trilby. And Doc Martens. Trilby. You know, and he's Trilby. He's a guy with a Trilby, and he's doxing somebody. Right. Uh, like, like Helen McEntee. You know. Yeah. Okay. So, and that is not an invitation to do that to all our hacker. Yeah. To all our hackers out there. <laughs> Hacky, uh, hacky Christmas. Uh, Kyle O'Neill. How about a Rye? How about Ryle O'Neill? And he's like, like he's just a Rye guy, do you know? What about Kylo Ren? We've already done that. What about it? Uh, it's a good one. We should do it yeah. again, actually, now that you mention it. Yeah. What about Kylo Rye? And he's like, um, oh, yeah. Uh, what is. What, God, that's. Yeah, I can't even think of a single worry. line that Kylo Ren said in the movies. Let the past die. Kill it. If you have to. He's like, who's my dad, isn't he? No, he knows who his dad is. It's Han Solo. Uh, I thought it was Darth Vader. No, Darth Vader. <laughs> um, what about his like... Um, Dark, Darth Vader's his granddad. Oh. Han Solo is Darth Vader's son? No. Leia is Darth Vader's daughter. Yes, yes. That's like one of the things where it's like the uh, the dad is like brings his son to the hospital after he got hit by a boss and then the surgeon's yeah. like I can't operate on him Darth Vader's son <laughs> <laughs> he'll kill me <laughs> he'll kill me if it goes wrong <laughs> Connor Barry uh, what about uh, Connor living with Larry Connor Larry David what about just Connor Gary Interesting. Interesting. Just instead of one guy called Connor, he's now two guys. One called Connor. One, one called, called Gary. Gary. It could be two guys we're called Connor and Barry, but you know, whatever. That's true. Liam McCartan. That'll be uh Liam McApple Tart man. Yes. Yeah, and he loves his apple tarts as Liam. He McCartan. loves them. Yeah. You know, makes them every day for breakfast. Hates apple lattices though. Ugh. What's it's, that? They're like the kind of crisscross thing, you know? Oh uh, yeah, I don't like those. <laughs> Too flaky. Um, Claro Nulon, that'll be um, Claro. That's so true, Lon. That's so true that you said that. Yeah, that is so true. That is so. That is so true. That is so true, Lon. When we said, uh, what did we say earlier on? That was true. Uh, that podcast host shouldn't be kept to account. Was that? 
<laughs> yeah, that's so true. Uh, Niall McGillicool, uh, Niall McGillicool, because it's just so good to be true, true, true to it's yourself. It's so true as well. That's I so mean, true. Yeah. Um, Ronan Carey, Ronan Scary. You said to retire that, so we'll do something yeah. else. Sorry, I forgot. Ronan uh, McSherry, like that other guy we know who's a playwright, you know? Uh, yes. Just like him. You're like him. You like write plays. You're like shit. that guy. Yeah. And uh, one t- remember when we had a podcast with him before on Cyberpod? Yeah. And then he got, he, he was, he didn't like something I said about Seamus Heaney. Yeah. I still remember yeah. that. <laughs> um, Neve Kelly. Yeah, that was really one of those situations where you probably threw out an opinion that you hadn't really thought. You didn't think anyone would bother. Like, who has a strong opinion on Seamus Heaney? Yeah, and I know. Martin Chow was like, <laughs> why do you think that? He was like, well, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair at all. And that was what he said at the time. And I was like, because I was saying like, I just, because we had a joke about like Seamus Heaney just being like, feeling so ashamed to be a poet. He's like, can I yeah. dig with my pen? Oh God. What yeah. is, am I seriously writing this? <laughs> we said something else at the time, but I think we'll leave that, leave that for the archives. Anybody who wants to pull that one what up and say? cancel us later on. I don't uh, remember that. I'll, I'll tell you off, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Neve Kelly, that'll be... Uh, ba, 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 ba. Can Neve you believe Ke- it's not Kelly? Um, Yeah, Kira Kelly. You always choose ones that I know for a fact that Neve would hate. <laughs> you, know, you keep choosing people, then you know, I just see Neve like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let's go with my one instead um, Polly Doyle that'll be um, Polly Kelly Polly Kelly alright next uh, last one is sorry Polly Doyle come on uh, no one more uh, Polly you foiled my plan for the last time just that's that's the best I could think of I'm sorry Polly no right. that Joe plan. Joyce and we need to think our thinking caps yeah, on okay. think, think them on and then we need to think with them on mm-hmm so that'll be um, um. What about Bojo? I was Bojo throwing throwing all his toys out of the pram. Yes. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, he's there and good. he's like, "Well, yeah, I'm a racist or whatever. Whatever Where he's done I recently, am. you can't keep him down." I have COVID, you know. I still can't believe that he almost died of COVID. Like he, he he actually, he was talking about it when he was out. He was like, there was some, he said there was nurses by my bedside when it wasn't looking very good. Okay. Mm. And then he thanked them and he's like, we're going to have to. And then they gave them about two weeks ago, a 1% pay increase. I saw that. And it's like, you nearly died. Like, yeah, that's like, it. You, 1%. <laughs> Someone calculated it. It was literally like. It was like two pounds, like a week extra. Yeah, it was like something that's insane. No money. That's what a hundred pound a week. Oh, you know, like, a year. You just don't give them like because they were like there. Was somebody was they were talking to a nurse on Navarra Media, and he was like, you know, they're like, what do you think of that? And he was like, I would have preferred that they not give us any money at all, mm. honestly, because that is just so offensive, you know. <laughs> like, that's it. It's like I remember with the with the Galway French woman. It was a, another problem when I'd driven to Galway for a gig that was cancelled and they didn't tell me. Like, I don't know if the venue just wasn't open and no one had told me that it was cancelled. Yeah. And I rang them and they were like, oh, oh, well, you should have checked. And then the next day I got a call. They were like, we want to send you 20 quid. <laughs> and I was like, just keep it, but never contact me ever again in my entire <laughs> life. Just keep the money. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. 20 quid. I know. I know. Was that my friend? Like, last one, I'm sorry about this, but my friend one time he applied to go on the dole. He was waiting for months for it to happen. And then at the end, they gave him, I think they gave him like a tenner a week. And he was just like, by that time, he'd already found the job, but he was like, I'm not telling them because I'm getting all the back pay from that dole. And then I'm signing off. It's like, <laughs> how dare you? But yeah. I will take all the money that, you know, I will steal money from you because fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, goodbye, everybody. See you Bye. later. Oh, yeah. Oh, 